Welcome to another episode of Big Girls Float Better. It's your boy, the Cheshire Cat, because I want you to smile like that. What's up, guys? I got this really cool article I'm going to read for you. Well versus Mermaid. Okay, so basically it's about a lady who responds to a gym ad or like a gym promotion thing. So here it goes. A while back at the entrance of a gym, there's a picture of a thin and beautiful woman. The caption was, this summer, do you want to be a mermaid or a whale? The story goes, a woman of clothing size unknown answered the following. Dear people, whales are always surrounded by friends, dolphins, seals, curious humans. They are sexually active and raise their children with great tenderness. They entertain like crazy with dolphins and eat a lot of prawns. They swim all day and travel to fantastic places like Patagonia, the Barrett Sea, or the coral reef of Polynesia. They sing incredibly well and sometimes even are on CDs. They are impressive and dearly love animals, which everyone defends and admires. Mermaids do not exist, but if they existed, they would line up to see a psychologist because of a problem of split personality. Women are fish. They would have no sex life and could not bear children. Yes, they would be lovely, but lonely and sad. And who wants a girl that smells like a fish by his side? Without a doubt, I'd rather be a whale. At the time when this media tells us that only a thin is beautiful, I prefer to eat ice cream with my kids and have dinner with my husband. Eat and drink and have fun with friends. We women gain weight because we accumulate so much wisdom and knowledge that there isn't enough space in our heads, it spreads all over our body. We are not fat. We are greatly cultivated. Every time I see my curves in the mirror, I tell myself how amazing I am. Okay, so that ends that article, but I think it is very nice, positive, right, encouraging, goes against the whole... um, the whole fat culture, thin culture thing. But yeah, it's a nice way of looking at things. Um, do you want to be a well or do you want to be a dolphin? I, I don't think that type of advertisement is going to be out there. Um, you know, do you want to be overweight? Okay, we'll come in and we'll help you get thin. But cool article. See if I find another one because we got some time. Tell me what you think in the comments. Alrighty. So this, a second article is titled... How does a man feel when he marries a beautiful slim woman who later becomes extremely overweight? Okay, and this is on the site Quora. Okay, so let's get started. It sounds like the real question is whether he loved her or loved what he saw. In other words, lust, not true love. Not to feel bad, people mistake lust for love all the time. Why do you think divorce rates are so high? Speaking more for myself, I married a slim, trim woman. People would even compliment her on how trim she was. Anyway, we had children and other things happened. After a few years, that slim, trim individual started to change. As she put on weight and her body changed from having kiddos. Interestingly enough, I found that I still loved her. We have now been married 42 years and we are still married. I assure you, neither of us look the same as we did in our 20s, but I still love her. And I'm glad I had the opportunity to spend my life with her. She is very smart, and we still have great intellectual conversations. We love spending time together and traveling to various national parks in the US. We are both voracious readers and lifelong learners. Was it a marriage made in heaven? Of course not. We had disagreements over the years, and there were really hard times in our lives together. The hardest involved the loss of two children many years ago. After the loss of the second child, we almost split up. But we made it through those tough times because we loved each other. 
and we're committed to each other. One of the biggest concerns today is that one of us is going to pass and the other will be left alone. We each have a difficult time imagining life without the other. Sometimes I feel selfish and self-centered and hope that I go first so I won't have to figure out life without her. However, I know that whatever happens, I'll be okay. At the end of the day, it's much I'm a much better person for having this wonderful woman in my life. So the question is, do you really love each other? So obviously, the the original question, go back to the original question, how does a man feel when he marries a beautiful, slim woman who later becomes extremely overweight? So obviously, this is a guy who wants to marry right a thin woman and hope that she doesn't gain weight. And I think I address this one in an earlier uh, video but from the other side so for example let's say you're dating a, a larger woman you know knowing what her intentions are Karen okay, because there's some women who are larger who have every intention to go back to the gym lose weight etc cetera, etc cetera. in other words her largeness might just be for a situation that happened something big happened in her life and she had to quit the gym to handle that situation so, same thing here, uh, it's, like I said, but it's from the flip side. So, yes, you need to love a person whether they are slim and they get bigger, or they're bigger and they get slim. You don't want to walk out of a relationship saying, hey, look, I no longer love you because your body isn't uh, the way I want it. So, you got to uh, be prepared for that. However... However, it's also nice to know if that person does want to be a certain size and if they're doing things to keep that size. So if a person is big, you know, are, are they, do they love their body for where it is and what it is? So that's what it is. You got to love their body no matter what it is. They got to love their body no matter what it is. But that change, that change scares some people. Um, and the thing is, person's going to change in a relationship regardless it could be their weight it could be their attitude it could be you know their position on a particular issue change is going to happen um, change can be scary you don't want to get scared of change but you got to be open to it so you got to love the person regardless and that is something to me I wish I see more of you. Know, I talked about this to a coworker where I said it seems like to me a lot of people are a lot of people want someone who is just like them and no different. In other words, they need somebody who mirrors their ideas and feelings and opinions on certain issues. And if it's different, then they're ready to walk away. And he said the opposite. He says that's not what he sees. And I think sometimes we see we see ourselves, you know, you meet yourself in a relationship, you meet yourself in friendships. And so if you're meeting people who want someone who's exactly like them in a particular area, and if they, if you're not, they walk away, check yourself. Are there certain things where a person has to be the same as you, you know, politically, uh, religiously, right? Uh, weight? Do they have to have a certain weight? Are you walking away? Do they have to have a certain height? Are you walking away? Do they have to be a certain race? Or you're not even going to talk to them? Okay. So if you got those things in your life, oh, hair color, height, race, age, and if they're not, I'm not interested, then it shouldn't be a surprise if you end up meeting someone who has those same qualities, probably in a different area, you know, and they're willing to walk away if you don't stick to a certain ideology or a certain viewpoint. So you want to be open, you want to be flexible, you want to love the core, the the deep core of who a person is and not just the physical aspects. It's great to have physical aspects to attract you to the person, but the long-term permanent you know, meat of the relationship should not be physical qualities. So I hope you like those two articles. I will leave a link. Check it out. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and commenting. You have a wonderful day. Don't forget, big girls float better.